Okay, folks, thank you for tuning in tonight. I've got, we have a great stream for you. You see Hurricane is still alive alive and well. <laughs> she just chooses to not be on some streams based on the content. I don't have as much concern for that. I have a great stream though, because this gentleman on the, on the screen, we're gonna call him uh, D, Mr. D. Mr. D is what we're gonna call him. He is 85, 90 percent of the kind of coaching calls I used to do when I first came into trucking because I had a very successful background before trucking. I had a very storied career across different industries. And then I said, you know what? I just want to walk away from this. I've got a lot of chaos going on. I don't want to jump back into the things I've been doing and who I was. Mm -hmm. And Mr. D, introduce yourself and tell the folks who you've been up until now. And how old are you, by the way? I'm 53 years old, and um, I worked a lot of different uh, jobs in the in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area, and I recently re relocated to North Dakota. Now you're from that area as well, because you came. When you said in the pre-interview, you came from a big family. Yep, yep. I'm originally from Minnesota, so um, in the Twin Cities area. Yep. Okay. What has made you? be at the point in life to look at, because most people, especially more mature folks, dudes especially that have had very, very successful backgrounds, a lot of education, they don't think about truck driving naturally. So what brought you to the point to looking at trucking and go, you know what, I need to look at this right now based on all my, all my life and what's going on? Uh, a couple of things. Uh, one is I think um, you can make some pretty decent money and, um, you know, I love listening to, to podcasts and shows and stuff. So you can do that while you're working. Uh, and, you know, it just kind of sounds fun, a fun adventure, you know. Um, and there's very, there's not much education to, to get. You know, you don't have to get a four-year degree or something like that mm -hmm. or like a two-year two degree or something. Um, although you need to get your experience and stuff like that. But you can just kind of doesn't take much to hop in the driver's seat. You're, you're right. And one of the things I tell people, and I told you the same thing, you got you to give yourself kind of six months to a year because the seat will answer all the questions. You might jump in doing a certain type of uh, freight and you realize two months in or three months in, it's just not the right type of freight. And you have a chance to, to switch up pending which, whether you had them pay for school or not. Sometimes you can switch up during or during training driving. You can say, I want to drive like as an example, like with Prime, who is a company I tell you to still look at. Um, you can at least you could three years ago when I was doing coaching calls, you could start off driving, let's just say tanker and then switch up and go do reefer for a minute. And if you wanted to go try uh, flatbed, you could do all that during the training phase as long as they knew you were going to stay on training pay, which mm -hmm. I think training pay now is seven fifty eight hundred dollars a week, which isn't horrible money, but it's you know if you're if you're living out of the truck and you're you know living a, a pretty low key lifestyle, you look like you're in pretty good shape. You know, it's not not a bad idea. Um, so you thought about trucking. What are your biggest before we start talking about what my recommendations are and what questions I asked you to kind of get you to start thinking along that lines? What are your biggest hesitations about jumping into trucking? There's got to be a couple. Um, probably the biggest one is, you know, once you lock the door of your house behind you and enter the door of your truck, uh, you're not going to have running water or be back home until you get back home. And depending on, you know, if you're doing daily, if you're doing the weekly, the regional scene, or if you're doing over the road where it could be two and a half, three weeks, um, it's a lot of time away from home, you know, especially like other loved ones like my wife, you know, stuff like that. I know that, you know, it'll be a long time away, away from, you know, people. I'm not yeah. quite so much worried about not having running water. I mean, it's a luxury, you know, we all love running water. Um, but uh, that's what they have truck stops for, you know. Exactly. You're always, you're always a 20 yard walk to running water, bathrooms, showers. Uh, not when you're out driving necessarily, but at least when you stop at a truck stop, always. Um, and I just happened to 
end up marrying a girl that was at 10,000 feet in China and didn't have running water or heat and air conditioning. Camped most of my <laughs> life and I've, tra I've traveled out of backpack pretty much since I was 16. So I didn't really have any concerns jumping into a truck. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a seamless transition. Well, I, I'd say this to you. And again, I sent you a couple questions. And some of the questions for you folks that are more mature going through whatever chaos, whether it's a job change, a lifestyle change as far as divorce, bankruptcy, physical issues where you're, you had a medical issue and things happened. I, I do tend to find that many people go through things in twos or threes. So, you know, bankruptcy and a job loss, divorce and m medical issues and job loss or bankruptcy, which just adds more and more stress. And like I told you in the pre-interview, my concern with anybody thinking about jumping into a truck is it is a, if you don't drive with a teammate, it is a very solitary, not lonely, because I don't get lonely. I never have gotten lonely, but it's a very solitary lifestyle. And some people aren't used to how solitary it is. Now, you we've discussed that. How do you feel about that for you as a as a, as a man at 53 about being kind of by yourself all day and you know, in your own head all day long? How does that make you feel or how do you think it'll make you feel? Um, you know, I don't think it'd be that bad because you've already, you always got a phone around, you know, you can mm -hmm. always talk to people. And then also, um, you know, like I said, you can listen to different podcasts and, you know, whatever you like to listen to. Um, and then, you know, the reality is, is most people have to work a job anyways, where they're gone from their house or family and depending on what they're good at, either they're around people a lot or they're, they're solitary on their job, you know, right. whatever the job calls for and they're good at. So I don't foresee that being as big an issue. Um, but then again, I've never really done that before, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is, I, I'll tell you, being out here now eight and a half years, it is something to remember that, and, and sometimes you got to take it day by day. You know, you got to take things day by day, almost like Alcoholics Anonymous. Never been to them, but I've heard all the stories and they say you're just chasing one day. Sometimes you're just chasing one, the next hour, you know, to get through things. Trucking, especially if you're already in a little bit of chaos or trauma, as some people say, and you're switching into a career because a lot of people aren't comfortable with change. They're not comfortable with pattern disruption. You know, a lot of guys your age that I did coaching calls with. I did a lot of female coaching calls as well, but the men, let's just talk about that because I understand how a man thinks. Mm -hmm. you've, been that, you've been that dude your whole life and you've normally been in a job for 10, 12, 15, 20 years. And I had a lot of lawyers. I had a lot of doctors. I had a lot of uh, professionals, a lot of executives that whatever had happened, happened, you know? And they're like, hey, I, I think I want to take a break and just catch my breath. And they sounded like you. They have your educational background, which is phenomenal that, you know, you and I talked about. You have a broad breadth of experience, which like, you know what, I just I'm thinking about just being a truck driver and people look down on some of that. But I, they just don't know any better. And if you find that if you make it fit you, because what fits you is not going to fit me or not going to fit necessarily Hurricane, what fits you you'll find through that steering wheel. And if it does fit you, the business, I think it'll be something really, really settling for you, especially in the middle of chaos. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, bringing in a, in a halfway decent income, uh, you know, has a way of, you know, making a man feel better, you know? Yeah. Well, you got also and, uh, anybody that's listening to this now or later, just like Mr. D, you got to remember that the lower income is only the first six months to a year. And it's not necessarily going to be six months to a year. If you make the right move or with the right company, you could be closer to six figures in the first year. But the first year is just really getting your experience, getting accustomed to handling all the DOT things, all the clocks, all the drops and picks, all the driving through major cities with an 18 wheeler. If you choose to do that mm -hmm. now, I would tell you, and again, this goes to everybody listening now or later, you need to also like what like kind of what the questions were I sent you. Do you want to drive? Do you need to be back home? And we I'm gonna I'm not gonna ask you that question because I know it. But do you need to be back home every night or every weekend? That will affect which company you go with. Are you okay being on the road for you know a week or two or five or being being gone for six months? 
that will affect, affect what job you go with. Are you okay going further south or do you want to stay up where you are up further north, which you're going to be handling a, a big truck in the middle of snow days, which you know snow because you were raised in, you know, Minnesota area. That affects it because you can ruin your whole day dealing with snow. You know that already just with a passenger car. Add, add yeah. you know, add 14 more wheels to it. So all of that comes into play. And I will tell you because you're thinking right now, possibly something more local. Only thing I'd say there, man, is you might not know until you do it, but local was my least favorite of all the types of modalities I had. I didn't enjoy local at all. Matter of fact, there were many times, because you said one of the jobs you're looking at, um, and, and, and Mr. D is not in school yet, by the way. He's got, all, he's got your permit. What else do you have right now? Endorsements. Uh, all I have is my permit. I'm kind of working on my med card. I need, a, I need a, a letter for my med card, and that's pretty much it. Okay. If you have a chance and you can you can afford it, I'd I'd go ahead and get your endorsements too. They're sim they're fairly simple tests, and I know from the background and pre interview you're a very smart guy. But um, I just like some of that's going to be because if you land in the wrong gig for the first three to six months, you will absolutely hate trucking, and I, I'll tell you that you will. So being back home, you said it's one of the local jobs you're looking at. It's almost an hour commute each way. Then you're adding kind of on your twelve hour day another hour on good driving days. I didn't like it. Matter of fact, even when I was doing local, I ended up sleeping in the truck most days and taking back off from the yard because having to get to the house, they were doing construction on 77 mm -hmm. coming out of Charlotte up to where I lived in Lake Norman. And it was an hour and 30 minute ride one way, you know, each coming and going. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sleep. So you're still kind of sleeping somewhere else. Why not go ahead and just be over the road? But you might like it. Now you're talking about, uh, and we don't need to get into specifics. But you had told you had told me that you were thinking about that. It kind of depends on which company does what with how they pay, and whether they pay for your schooling. I wouldn't be scared of a company paying for your schooling. I would just try to make sure. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to list a couple companies, and I'll send you these same things via email as well. I still believe, and I, I know the the business right now is in a little bit of a dip. I still believe Prime is a good starter company for a more mature professional guy like yourself. Um, I'm not saying people that don't have a good educational background or whatever else wouldn't fit, but Prime has a really, really good training program. Mm -hmm. They let you bounce, or at least they did let you bounce. Like you could come in and start on flatbed and try that. And then you get to the, the end and say, hey, can I, can I try Tanker out? Because Tanker is a different animal. And then, hey, could I try Reefer out? So the people I talked to were able to ask that question and have that happen. So by the time they landed in the seat, they had already done those modalities with a trainer with them. They had to stay on training pay and they kind of got a little bit of a glimpse of everything rather than having to go move to a company who did that or move within the company and do it yourself. Because there's nothing like having an extra set of eyes with you when things go south, which and, they will. And I was with uh prime at the very beginning um and it was very professional very easy to look at what you wanted to do um and quite straightforward in a sense you didn't have to really deal with especially with the training it was all about training you know it wasn't uh we, we got this job and we want you to do this and do that it was it was really for the beginning and starting out and not really knowing much about it uh, other than cdl school it was for me it looked like it was really good but then i jumped in the truck with my trainer and everything else was different but so all that's going to come into play for you. What questions do you have uh, about any of what we've said so far? What do you, do you have any questions that popped into your mind? Um, yeah, question. Uh, maybe this helps your viewers too. Um, where does Prime do their training at? Missouri. Um, and I want to say, I can't remember which city, but Springfield, Springfield, Missouri. That's their hub. Okay. But I think they may have one other hub somewhere else, but most of it is Springfield, Missouri. And they and will send. To... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, did you have to be with them for a certain amount of time to pay back your schooling and stuff? Uh, yeah, I think their training program, if they pay for it, is very similar to other companies, whereas you have to be with them a certain amount of time to cover that cost. I think it's 12 months investment that they put in. You know? She went there because she already went to CDL school. She had watched my videos. Yeah, I was a little different. Um, basically, I was a little different. I'd already gotten my CDL, and I wanted to just go there for the training. 
uh, like your experience training, not necessarily from start to finish, including CDL school. So mine was a little bit different. She walked so, in with her license already because the CDL school gave her that. And then she was just there trying to get more for the experience training, I yeah, guess, for the six months to the get year. the driving training, not just the CDL school training. Yeah. So it's a possibility for you that they will probably have you a limit. And we talked about this on the pre-interview. They will probably have you a limit on uh, driving automatic trucks only because a lot of their fleet now is automatic. But it's a trade off. You know, do you want I, I, if I had my choice, I'd rather drive an automatic. Some people prefer a manual, but they don't know how to do it yet. It's it's a limiting factor in the oil field if you don't have a manual transmission license and you are up there in oil field heaven, man. I'm telling you, right. that's, that's where you're going to make the most money if you're not scared of a little bit of dirt, a little bit and of mud. And that's kind of one of the things I was going to ask you, too, you know, because I'm close. You know, I, I'm on the east side of the state and, you know, that's on the west side of the state, the oil patch, you know. And I know you've worked in the, the oil uh, fields in um, up here and then even down south, I believe. Um, and you've done really well with them. I made and the so, most um, money I'd ever made in the oil field other than being a lease op for Brothers Grimm. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it even more because you talk about, it's kind of like, even with some of the things you did in school, it's kind of like the harder the, 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 the business is, the less people are interested in it. And doing the oil field uh, crude oil, especially in some of the states where there's snow, because I did mine up in Wyoming. I, I jumped into Wyoming into a company and it was snowing from the, from uh, up until the first or second week in June, which was just blew my head apart. But I was at seven, 8,000 feet, you know, running those loads and then taking them back down to 2,000 feet. But I, I had a good time, but there was it was very, very limited competition. I was on the pad at night. I didn't have a lot of people when I was dropping that were keeping me in line because very few people want to be out in the middle of nowhere doing it. But I made really good money. So it I would tell you that most oil field companies, you need to have a manual transmission ability on your license nine out of ten times. And you need to also be normally about a year's experience minimum. You living up there, if you found the right company, I'm not saying it wouldn't be something that they would let you in with six months, but you might have to be with somebody driving, you know, for a minute. But that's going to be your best your best money out of the gate, especially if you don't want to lease a truck somewhere, which Prime is going to push you to lease. Just understand that. Or you don't want to go buy your own truck, which I don't think you want to right away anyway. So. Um, the market's a little bit soft right now. So I would, if I was, if you were my brother, I would tell you to cover all your bases financially, which would mean no lease, no, no truck purchase. Uh, try to find the highest rate per mile you can find and with the least amount of, uh, effort, yeah. you know, cause they're, they're looking at you just reverse. They want you to work for them for the least amount of money you'll work, work for and the most amount of effort you'll put in. So you need to almost reverse that in the trucking business and find those companies without talking it and without saying it to them that way. But oil field, yeah, oil field, it's even in South Dakota. I mean, it's a, you know, a lot of, a lot of companies down here too. Mm -hmm. It's just, you gotta be ready to deal with the winter or go South. Cause I know a lot of companies or a lot of drivers come up here for this, the summer and then go down to Texas for the winter. Cause it's like being in North or South Dakota in Texas from September, November to March or April. So there's a plan. Um, so if you're gonna if you're gonna go with the company, almost every company out there is gonna ask you if they're gonna pay for your CDL. They're gonna ask you for a 12 month commitment. You can leave early. You just have to pay them back. Um, they hate me saying that, but they can't. They can't change. They, and they might even have you up to sign something that you won't leave. I don't know. I don't know what the new rules are because I haven't done any coaching calls. You're my first legit coaching call, bro, in the last four years, probably. Uh, so oh, you wow. need to make that decision. You know, you also need to decide how long you want to be away from the house. Because if it's something you're OK being away from the house for two or three weeks, I would go that direction if you could, because you're going to make probably a little bit more money and have a little bit less hassle. But you will be dealing with big cities, you know, and that's with all this chaos coming up on the election. That's something to consider, too. And then um, real quick, uh, back to the oil fields, 
Is there a particular uh, endorsement that really works well in the oil fields? Like I'm thinking tanker, but that's tanker. Kind of my tanker. They, if you're going to do tanker, yeah, you can go do sand, and that's going to be pulling on one of their flatbeds. Probably it doesn't necessarily require a tanker endorsement, um, and maybe hazmat, especially if you're going to do tanker. And I will add uh, when I when I uh, was getting some training uh, before I went to Prime, and then obviously jumped in the truck with Red. Um, he said, you know, the best thing to do is, you know, get all your, your permit, get your endorsements, have everything done before you even get to CDL school, or at least while you're in CDL school. For me, the endorsements, I was like, oh, I hazmat tanker. It was very baffling for me. And I thought that's a lot of work, you know, as well as getting the permit, the medical card, you know, and those few things all lined up. Uh, and especially once you get your CDL, but actually it really was just a, for me, once I broke it down and looked at it, it was just some studies for some tests. And as long as I got, like, your permit requires a test. The hazmat is less questions, I think, and tanker is um, a little bit less questions than the permit. And it's very similar to get that permit. It's very similar to get hazmat, tanker, and other things like that. So really, it's just about extra study. It's about going to the DMV and getting those tests and then passing them. And once I broke it down to it's just some more testing and just some more certificates, it worked out, actually, it wasn't it wasn't difficult. It was just a little bit baffling when you look at it first, at first point, and not really know what it is. But once you break it down, um, it was some extra tests, just like the permit test. And um, so I took them and I had all of my endorsements. And, you know, I, we might never use them, but I have them in case I need tanker. I have them in case I need hazmat. So. But you're going to need about a year's experience for the average oil field company anyway, unless you okay. went out there and worked on the rig, which I wouldn't recommend. Uh, yeah. But... You're going to need that that oil field experience anyway. Do you have any other specific questions before I kind of go to the next thing I was going to talk about? Uh, no, or I okay. guess uh, I guess I guess I do. Um, what? Um, how do you go about uh, finding a job, a, a well-paying job in the trucking business? Like, is there a website, or you talk to people, or you kind of put it all together? Every all your resources. Well, because like I told you on the on the pre-interview, companies tell you just enough to get the hook in. And you have to you learn to read between the lines. And what they don't tell you is just as important as what they do tell you. So I would I would just say number number one, I wouldn't get too focused on that because if, if you can find something to make fifty to seventy grand the first year. And I know that's that's very little money compared to what you did in your past. I understand that. But all you're looking for right now is you're looking for a little bit of base to build from. That's all you're looking for. You need to put aside what you used to make, who you used to be, what you used to do. All of those things are good because it's going to give you the strength and the fortitude to get through. But in trucking your first year, you're probably going to make between 50 and 70. And it'll seem like even less once you start having the time in the truck and the taxes taken out and whatever else taken out. But you kind of got to go through that kind of like when you were in your early stages of, of education in college, you did, it's hard to see, it was hard to see the end of the road in, in school. You need to realize that's just a starting point, man. And everybody I talked to that had half a brain when I first came into trucking, they were all doing really well after two, three, four, five years, if the business fit them. Mm -hmm. If the business fit them, if they didn't mind solitude, if they didn't mind, you know, being by themselves pretty much all day long, or they didn't mind having to drive in and out of big cities, or if if they were okay with that, because the big cities will will chase you off too, because you get in some of that traffic with an 18 wheeler, it's a little bit wacky. Or as a European trying to learn the actual road system, it's very different from what I'm used to. So, um, you know, you in the first year of experience, you learn a lot about the business side of it not just what you learn in CDL school. CDL kind of gets you that, that license. Once you've got that license, the experience is very different. And after a year, I was very, very much more confident about what I liked, what I didn't like. Again, the steering wheel tells you what what's good for you. I was very confident about what I liked, what I didn't like, what was worth the money, what might not be worth the money. And, you know, did I like over the road? Did I like regional? Did I want to be back at, well, I didn't want to be back at a house, but those kind of things. And I, um, I found what I really enjoyed and what made the business for me, because it's very different. And you can take notes on this, this answer later. I, I would say prime is a player because they'll pay for your education. They'll pay for your school. They'll pay for your 
training. They'll give you good experience, which is invaluable for somebody that's never driven a big rig before. I had driven big rigs, not 18 wheelers, but I had driven straight tanker trucks when I was on the flight line my first four years in the military, actually the first six years. Um, so I, I was around trucks that had, I want to say that 14 wheels. I was around that kind of environment anyway, but I didn't have the, the, the combination vehicles. I would say prime. I would say, don't be scared. Don't be scared of Swift or Knight nowadays. They've really tightened up their programs. I wouldn't be scared of them. They get a really bad rap, but that's always driver specific. I wouldn't be scared of, uh, you can you can Google companies. This is kind of your question. You can Google companies that pay for CDL school, and you can find that list, okay? Because really right now, you just want to find the company that's going to pay you the most and give you the best training, and then you're going to stay with them for 6 to 12 months, depending on what your what your game is. And then you need to start looking at which comp- where do I want to go. Number one, you're going to be talking to other drivers anyway. Number two, you can jump on Craigslist. You can jump on Indeed.com. You can jump on uh, just Google and Google, you know, best paying trucking jobs near me because some of those jobs are going to be local jobs. Some of those jobs are going to be regional jobs. Some of those jobs are going to be over the road or they'll give you the choice. So you, that's what I would tell you. And I know you said you're going to take the, you didn't want to take notes. You'll just go back and watch the video. Even Facebook has some stuff as well, you know. There's plenty of Facebook trucking groups as well. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be scared of a uh, trucker's report. I wouldn't be scared. There's a lot of uh, blog type sites that have a lot of interaction with drivers that they put some good information up. So I wouldn't be scared of those. But really this first six months to a year, uh, Mr. D, I would tell you to focus on which companies, if you go that way, that pay for your school, have the best pay weekly and the best training and then you want to find out if they're going to give you a manual uh, training as well or it's going to be restricted to only automatic because that will affect you at some point um, especially if you go to the oil field but i would plan on the first year being let me just get in the, get in a seat and let me just get get myself comfortable and then start looking outside of that because you'll have had your answers for a year the steering wheel will give you the answers and if you have any any questions on top of what I've said, please uh, do it. You know, if you can, and I'll try to bounce on that. That sounds good. No, I don't have any questions on that. That's that's good information. Thank you. I just would be ready, man. One of the biggest things I had to get past was the difference in pay because I hadn't made you know fifty, seventy grand in probably 15 years. And I was having to kind of like I was having in my mind, I had to remember I wasn't starting from zero. I was starting at a different place. So I took all the knowledge I had about how to speak to people, how to move through life, how to think, how to maneuver physically as far as the intensity required. And I used all that in trucking, but I wasn't making anywhere near as much as I had made before. And that can mess with your head if you if you let it. I just said, you know what? I'm just going to get my experience. And I really, really enjoyed traveling. I really enjoyed waking up in a different city every every day. I didn't really enjoy chasing a parking place at night after it's 7 o'clock in some of these places. But I also never considered sleeping at a rest area, which I, I would now if I had my uh, self-protection. And I had never considered sleeping on, well, I won't say much more. But I, I, I was always looking for a, a travel center. I'd be a little bit more open on where I slept now based on that, just to do my 10 hour break or my eight hour break. Um, and when I came in trucking, they didn't initially have the the seven, three or eight, two split for the sleeper berth. You'll learn about that. Sometimes you can get part of your rest done while you're at a shipper. You know, you can go, go into sleeper berth if you're going to be there for 12 hours, if you're doing that kind of work. And uh, so there's, there's a couple ways to play that game. Um, I just wouldn't look past the 12 month point right now. I'd look to try to get the most pay weekly, the most pay cents per mile after you get out of training, try to find a company that'll do all that and give you uh, the manual transmission driving. If not, I'll I'll handle that later. And then plan on setting yourself mentally for six months to a year of comfortability before you start looking outside of what you're doing. 
because you don't want to get distracted by what the real mission is that first year, which is you train yourself on the business, you know, and the lifestyle. Because it's a lifestyle. Trucking is a lifestyle. Trucking is not a job. If you look at it like that way, then it's a lot, a lot better to navigate. You're not working out per hour and all that. You're just making really good money. You're having a lot of fun. You're on the road. And it is a lifestyle. Once it goes from a job to a lifestyle, it's a lot. You don't ever feel like you're working. You know, never feel like you're working. But I would tell you those things and those companies online, uh, the top three, Prime, uh, Swift and Knight. I know people are going to raise hell when I said that. But you know what? I'm talking about somebody who wants them to pay for school, get good training with good equipment, with companies with decent CSA scores or higher than average, because all that matters. And with good equipment, especially, you don't want to be in a trucking company that's breaking their trucks breaking down every week and you're sitting somewhere in a hotel while the truck's in the shop for two weeks. You want to you want to avoid all that. Those little you call them squirrels, you avoid all those little foxes and squirrels that get in to ruin your your day. You want to try and avoid all that if you can, you mm -hmm. know, and I would tell you, if you can be patient with yourself for six months to a year. Number one, you'll know in the first couple of months if trucking is for you, you might be out of trucking. You know, you might leave. I'm not trying to put any bad mood Jojo or mojo on you, but you could. You could be in the seat and go, you know what? I don't like this. Or, and I know it's not going to be the case for you. Some of you folks listening that are that Mr. D's story is resonating. You could be coming out of a relationship and go, you know what? I'm going to use trucking. And I'm going to find a girl to drive with, especially the dudes. And I'm going to try to rebuild a life on the road with a woman that actually wants to do this business too and just mm -hmm. travel. Like it's almost like being in an RV and just going dropping off packages to people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know?